What's up, you guys? Today, we're experimenting with doing some viewer VOD reviews. So I hope to do this more in the future. Right now, it's really hard doing daily uploads on YouTube. I've been sick, but this is the content I eventually want to really get into. So we're going to try it out. I'm going to give you my raw reaction first. So just watching the match straight through, no rewinds or anything like that. And then we're going to go through the replay like I would if I were analyzing my own replay uh, at this rank, okay? So um, the viewer sent me their Tekken ID. We went through it, and I hope to do more of this in the future. But let's check it out. Slowly raise the volume here. Okay. Game audio is up. So Jin, Horong versus Jin, I'm not super experienced in this matchup specifically, and I think that's okay. I think at red ranks, you're going to be focusing more on mastering, piloting your character, and then doing very basic things to stop dying. Those are how I look at red ranks. So let me frame that real quick. I know I said I wouldn't pause, but just quick things to set expectations. Red ranks. Uh, improving, piloting your character. And then uh, basic defensive things. I can't type to avoid dying. Okay. Like these are the top two priorities, I think. And then piloting your character in includes like uh, offensive frame awareness, right? Like basic offensive frame awareness. And then uh, like setups, flow charts. I don't recommend like sticking to these, but this is usually what leads to success at these ranks from what I see. Okay. So like if you can pilot your character, really really well in the tekken framework that should take you to purple ranks okay that's my opinion uh subject to change uh let's look at this i want to make sure all of these settings are off too so i'm going to turn off these pauses for now and i'll turn these back on when i do the replay review all right let's start over watch this straight through and i'll give my live reaction and then we'll analyze it all right so we did one two back flamingo that's that's not traditional for horong mains that string is very effective at low ranks. The 1-1-3-3. Uh, three, three. Okay, down back 4-4. Four, four, but he's winning. Okay. And, and the context of this video is my viewer said, I think I should be better than I am. Okay. Really, really oppressive offense. That's pretty good. I don't know if he picked that up himself or if he watches Huarang players, but that looks like what I see a lot of high-level Huarang players doing. Duckable string there. That's some defensive stuff. Okay, missed a punish there. Okay, went for the armor move. It traded. That was a, a there was a bit of downtime there. I don't know if you guys saw. They kind of just stood still a bit. So we'll uh, check that out in the analysis. But so far, he's not dying. Went for an unsafe launcher on keep out. I would have liked that to be a skyrocket instead of the back three. Okay, and this is what I mean by piloting your character, right? There was a bit of a combo drop there that could have killed. And uh, we want to optimize that, those situations. Make sure you're getting the damage you need when you should be getting it. But he wins there too, so uh, let's see how the rest of this match goes, because it looks like he's dominating. Okay, he slowed down a bit, but the offensive strategy was clearly winning. Jin gets a forward forward two, down back four, and now Jin is in heat, applying offense. All right, Horong stuff happening now. This is what we like to see. Jin is struggling with the Horong defense. To be honest, even I struggled with Horong. Nice punish from the Jin. Heat smash. How did he get hit there? He must have hit a button. So there's some frame lack of frame awareness. So I might just change this to just general frame awareness. Okay. But he's attacking again. It's not over. Okay. A little cheese string and he ran into the rage art. Okay. So that kills him for sure. We can go to round. That was round three. So we can go to round four. The strings out of Flamingo are real. That 1133 is not real. And by real, I just mean having like reasonable counterplay. Like, the one one three three doesn't involve a mind game or anything. You can just counterplay it with good defense. Okay. The Horang strings are working. How does he play this? Runs into the Heat Smash. So I have a few points of critique right there that we can talk about. Okay. Takes a turn back with Heat. And now he's just standing here at this range. At this range, Jin is really strong. And once he's in, he's in a dominant position, right? Oh, good duck from the Jin. So the Jin has a bit of nice defensive awareness. This is pretty cool. Jin's prowess is a bit higher, 180k. So this is probably a sub character. And I think this is player match. So I would usually recommend sending me reviews of like uh, ranked match. But uh, player match is not bad, obviously. Player match is good. Long sets are good. Um, this is just a bit confusing to me. Understanding like how these players are trying to play. This guy's on a side character. That's a bit weird. Okay, big whiff here. 
Got his back. We need more damage off the back turn. But again, that'll come with more character comfort. And then he died. Okay, okay. So I already have great information here. Um, and this is actually a great example. If you are yellow, orange, red, purple, blue rank, and you are dying like this, here is how you should review your VOD, okay? So this is what I believe are the priorities for red ranks. How to review your replay, though, on a very, very base level. On a very, very base level is what killed me and why. These are the two questions you need to ask. So when you're reviewing this whole replay, it can be overwhelming because there's so much information, right? There's so much information going on. So what we want to do, uh, normally I would recommend having all of these settings on. Display while paused, uh, your punishment techniques, display while paused, high moves you can duck under, and throw commands. If you're taking the time to review your replay in the first place, you should take notes on these defensive things if you're not already studying it in the lab. Get as much information as you can, get as much productivity out of the replay mode. Secondly, I like to turn off this player attack info. So normally it's displayed like this and there's so much nonsense on the screen. I don't think you need to see your combo damage. I don't think you need to see this information. You want the screen to be as clear as possible. And then command history is important so you can see your moves and your opponent's moves, okay? People say, I ducked, I blocked, I did this, this, this. The game doesn't lie, okay? So you need to see what inputs went through. Let's review it now. So. I have a lot of critiques, but I'm going to focus on how I would review it as a player at this level. Okay, so I look at what killed me and why. I'm looking at launchers and knockdowns, okay? So look at launchers and knockdowns. Okay. Here he just wins. Cool. Love that. Nothing to say. I have stuff I could criticize if I were nitpicking. Not important right now. Priority, again, basic defensive things to avoid dying, okay? Take notes on that duck opportunity that came up there. Take notes on this punish opportunity. Keep it moving. So far, nothing is killing him. So far, nothing is killing him. Okay, so what happened here? This is not a knockdown. This is like a heat engage, I guess. But let's look at this. What happened here? Huge whiff at this range. So how can we clean this up? So at this range, let's see what happens here. So he hits the backlash. Forward, forward, three. And then he just runs up and whiffs, right? So maybe he should move up closer and, and, and attack, right? To avoid whiffing. Of course, the reason why you would whiff in the first place here is he's probably afraid that Jin is going to mash and swing at him, right? At this point right here, Jin is standing. So he may be thinking, hey, I don't want to get hit if Jin decides to hit a button. I should hit my button early. So he swings now. And there's the whiff. If you're afraid of somebody mashing into you, you have multiple options. You could do what you just did here, but that's kind of a big risk. What I honestly would have done, maybe just dome attack. Maybe you chill out at this long range and just and just reset to neutral. You already have a huge lead here. Look at the HP. You see the HPs here? Huge lead already. You don't need to get another hit right now, okay? So if you just reset to neutral and start playing the game again without giving him that free damage off of the whiff, you can just keep pushing your advantage, right? This is a good way to lose all that advantage. This is how it starts. Jin gets running three, but then Jin whiffs too. So arguably you had a whiff punish opportunity here. Uh, not here. This is this is a bit like high level, right? Like, oh, I jumped way far back. Hang on, sorry. I'm a noob. I'm getting used to the replay system. Not here. Okay, we're back here. Okay, pay attention now. Sorry, we're locked in again. So here, magic four whiff, right? Now, this is a bit hard to do, especially as you're getting more comfortable with your character, but as you aspire to higher level play, you want to look for these things. All right. Now, this didn't kill you, but this move is launch punishable, and Huarong has the skyrocket opportunity there. With punish with back three, clip people coming into you with the safe move, which is either skyrocket or down forward two. Of course, back three will probably work for now, but we want that's an optimization you can make. Again, not top priority. Top priority is not dying, because clearly you won anyways, right? Tekken has a lot to work on. Just start picking small things. Okay, look, a knockdown. How did we get hit? How did we get hit here? Down back three. Jin is plus three on block, right? Jin is plus three on block. And you hit down forward one. Right? So Jin is plus three. He did a magic four. That's 13 frames. This is a lack of frame knowledge, right? I'm going to assume that you know frame data at this point. And if not, you should check out my frame data for, for, frame data for dummies video. Uh, this is to the audience, not necessarily to the viewer. Okay, you got frame trapped here, you got hit, you had the block there. 
You had to block or pick a down jab or something like that, okay? Okay, this is a bit of a whiff because you whiffed the heat smash, but you won, okay? So we're not going to worry about that too much. All right, keeping it moving. Now, this is where it starts to go downhill, so we can really find a lot of information here. Okay, you blocked this time. That was good. Okay, we got hit. How did we get hit? Jin is plus 11. Did you see that? Jin is plus 11. If your character is spinning, you have severe minus frames. Okay, plus 11 down here. So not only did I get frame trapped, AKA not my turn to hit buttons, right? Oh, it's cut off. Right, did I get frame trapped? Because this heat smash is 24 frames. You were minus, you were minus 11. So you picked a move that was way too slow and the ranges were awkward anyways. So like a jab here would probably not have worked. So this is an inappropriate time to hit a button. Inappropriate time to hit a button. And that lost you a lot of HP. Look at the HPs again. Okay. Back in it. Now you have your offensive opportunity. This is good. Okay, your jabs interrupt. He doesn't know the string defense. And then you swing into the rage art. Okay. This isn't the end of the world. So if you get hit by a rage art, it's not the end of the world. You have more information now on when he wants to use the rage art. So this will happen. You'll take this loss and you'll just keep going. Rage Arts are annoying to die to, of course, but um, it's important to take it as data and just keep playing because you were you were winning most of the interactions until the Rage Art. You can just give it a slight hesitation and then play the next situation. How did we get hit here? How did we get heat engaged on? You did a run up grab, I believe. OK, so just a bit hard uh, to beat Jin's Demon Paw at that range. OK, he did not know the punish there. Counter hit here. All right, Horong offense starting. He's getting overwhelmed. Okay. There's a bit of inner. There's a bit of. This is again not top priority, but there's a few pauses between your offense here, right? So, like here, you whiff, you move a bit forward, and then do the sweep. After the whiff, I'm thinking of trying to get out of stance right away. And again, I'm not a Horong player, so this isn't. Don't take this advice too seriously. But um, have your options ready to go. Like, if he's backing out of range, can you get out of stance quickly? Can you figure out how to exit this situation? Because Huan can't block in stance, right? So there, he may find opportunities here to interrupt you. You might want to use the armor move. Lots of options here. Okay, what happened here? We got hit by a heat smash. Okay, so you contested his range there with your armor move. Not a terrible idea, but heat smash blows through armor. So what we're noticing a consistent pattern of, it happened with the Demon Paw earlier, is at this range, this is a bit more advanced stuff, but it's good to pay attention to. At this range, Jin has an advantage. Your only chance is to do an armor move. Jin's Heat Smash blows through armor, right? An armor move is unsafe. So Jin can just do Demon Paw for free. He can do electric, he can do all these moves, and you have to armor if you want to win um, with an attack. And that's not good risk reward because the armor is unsafe. So usually Huarong wants to get in and then start doing his stuff, right? So in this case, that's how that happened. Hell Sweep beats your armor here. Okay, now you use the armor. You don't really need the Heat Burst here. And the reason I say that is because Heat Burst has this armor trait, but Jin's minus eight. You can just take your turn back normally. You're not um, under a lot of pressure here. You can just run up and jab, something like that, like dash jab. The pushback's a bit annoying, but yeah. He does not have the frames to keep pressing buttons here. He would have to do backdash electric or something, which he hasn't shown yet. Now your offense is going. He gets a duck on a high. That was really good. And here's, a, again, a bit of delay. You see this? Minus eight, you sit still for a sec and then do an armor move, which is unsafe. He gets this punish that puts you at one hit. You get a nice hit here, which is good. And then he ducks your backlash. Okay, so a few tiny things to optimize. Again, I'm digging a bit deeper than I would at this level. So let me let me back it up. Uh, how I would analyze this as someone at this level trying to get better is really this big heat smash situation. You hit a button from really far away when consistently your character is stronger when he's already up close. So just play up close first and then start doing your mix ups. Down three, four. Uh, use dash jab to take control. One, two. Yeah. 
But the death here is more... Okay, so you did better there. Run up block. Run up block. Right? He gets a nice duck on your defense here. The armor was unsafe. So that's probably the big one. The armor was unsafe and the highs get ducked. I have trouble closing the distance. Yeah, so run up block. You play a bit closer so your dash jabs are still a threat. One, two flamingo is pretty good. Like, this is fine. Right? Skyrocket is okay. Again, focusing on where did we die? Oh, what happened here? We got counter hit. We whiffed a jab and then hit a button again. Yeah, one, two, four, three, and one, two, four are, are, are pretty good. It forces them to make a duck in read in neutral, and then your skyrocket is uh, is is an option. All right, how do we get hit here? This again, dropped our combo again. That's a character comfort thing, piloting your character. And then what happened after we dropped the combo? We tried to attack again and whiffed. So you would have to dash up here. All right, so did I whiff is ending up being a big problem. And then you tried to armor because you're kind of stuck in the stance. The mistake isn't the armor here. The mistake is the whiff. Well, the drop combo and then whiffing down 3-4. All right, and then what happened here? What happened? Oh no, the replay stops. Let's check it out. Okay, skip your outros, bros. Come on. Okay, let's play again. I want to see that last situation. That's kind of unfortunate that the KO happened so quickly. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if someone's in heat, your armor is no longer as good. And that's really important to keep in mind. Okay, so what happens here? You do the unsafe armor move again, right? So, so the the unsafe armor is what got you hit here. So we have multiple situations. Did I do an unsafe move? Right? Multiple situations where this led to your death. And then now you're in a minus 11 situation. Last mix up, he just gets a forward forward two. There's nothing. There's not much you can do there. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Um, this is not a roast, but uh, this viewer came in. And, and said, I think I should be better than I am. And while it's good to recognize your strengths and have confidence in your abilities, it is really important also to try to pay attention to what is killing you. This approach is universal across all levels. When I play a tournament match, even though I'm analyzing more things like spacing, like control, like uh, conditioning and threats like that, Ultimately, I'm looking at what killed me and why. And at a higher level, the only thing that changes is the why gets more complex. But this basic framework of what killed me and why is going to go a long way. So if you're yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, Tekken God, or Tekken King, Tekken Emperor, Tekken God, God of Destruction, this will always apply, okay? This will always, always apply. Again, I hope eventually to do this style of video more. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know if there was anything that was still confusing. But I hope that this is how you guys can look at your replays in the future and get more out of your Tekken 8 experience. I know a lot of people are really struggling with the game right now. I'm struggling with the game right now. I'm hard stuck. I'm not God of Destruction. But I think this will be really useful. So please leave a like if you like this. Again, comment if you have any questions or you think I missed something. And if not, leave an emoji. That helps me out a lot. Subscribe for more of this, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.